Do you have big thoughts or small thoughts? Do you have either midget thoughts or giant thoughts? Ambitious thoughts? Do you have, do you sometimes some friends would tell me, Harley, you think like a grasshopper. Do you have grasshopper thoughts? Or a whiner? Or more of a doer? A more of a doer. Revelation 22 verse 14. The Bible tells us there, Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have the right to eat from the tree of life. Right? Blessed are, are they that do. It's not blessed are they that complain or whine, but blessed are they that do His commandments. And this morning, what I'd like to share with you, we're looking in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. And this is all based from that verse. And we're going to look at how, on how God thinks. We're going to see that God is a big thinker. A big thinker. There in Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus himself is saying, But you shall receive power from the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in, Samaria, in Judea and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Let's just have one more opening prayer. Father in heaven, I ask that you bless your people with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's, let's look from the very beginning just how God has been a big thinker. Go with me to Genesis chapter 1. From the very beginning, from the foundation of this earth, there in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Here we have an undeveloped piece of rock, but yet what is God seeing? He's seen a complete planet. A, a planet Earth with trees, rivers, streams, plants, ants, life, with, with life, with birds, whales, fishes, sea creatures and mammals. He sees a completed planet Earth just from this undeveloped rock. And not only that, even after the fall, if you go there to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Here, by this time, the world has gone so bad that the Bible says that God regretted that He ever created man. But yet, God is a big thinker. And here, everything is looking bad. And man has seemed to lose a connection with God. But he sees one family who is righteous. And through one family preserves the human race. Because God is a big thinker. He could have started all over. He could have wiped out the whole world. And again got back in the dirt and made man again. Could he not have done that? Absolutely. But he, but he was a big thinker and he, he, he saw here. A righteous family and from that righteous family he saw the earth populated again and not just populated again but even cleansed and and cleaned from all the unrighteousness with just the work of water with just the work of water you see when when we see bad people we normally just move to a different neighborhood to eliminate the bad people but here, God didn't just move to a different neighborhood. Here, He preserved a family and cleansed the earth. Because God is a big thinker and God expects us also to think big like Him. Look, no, notice Genesis chapter 12. We're there in the book of Genesis. Just go to chapter 12. Here you can see that God is really a big thinker when He tells Abraham that He is going to be a father of a, a nation. There in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your children 
and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Abraham had no children. He was 75 years old and his wife was 65 years old and she could not bear children and yet God is telling Abraham, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. I'm going to make a great nation out of you. If you notice there, if you jump to Genesis chapter 15, from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, Abraham is trying to reason with, with God and say, but I'm, I don't have children. We are too old. The only one in our house is Eliezer, and maybe through him, it will be the great nation. And what, is, what, is, what does God say in verse 5? He takes him outside and says, Look, look now toward the heavens and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to them, So shall your descendants be. Abraham was trying to reason, but Lord, we, never, we, don't, we don't have any children. Maybe through, maybe through Eliezer and God, it takes them to count the stars outside. Look outside. Lord, but I have no children. Look at the stars. And look at the stars and see if you can number them. And that's how your descendants are going to be. God's thinking was much bigger than Abraham's thinking. Abraham's thinking was like, well, maybe through, through Eliezer or through some other reason. But God is saying, no, 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 no. And verse 6, you see here. That, that Abraham finally said, so, so be it, Lord. He says, and he believed in the Lord. And he, uh, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. God was thinking much more bigger than Abraham. And Abraham believed in the Lord. Of course, at first he tried to, tried to see the logic. And once he didn't and once God told him, just look at the stars. Just look outside and you can number them. And so Abraham says that he believed in the Lord. So going back to Acts chapter 1. Going back to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. There God is telling his people. He is telling his disciples. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Witnesses not just at home, but where else? In, in Judea, in Samaria. Samaria. The place where no Jew wanted to be. But they were to be witnesses in Samaria. And even to, the all, to all the world. You see, what does God have in mind? Just to, just to save Jerusalem? No. But the entire world. The entire world. God says to 11 people, you are going to take the gospel to the world. To 11. You're going to take the gospel to the world. See, God is a big thinker. And if you and I are going to be associated with God, we must be big thinkers. We must be big thinkers just like God is. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it is an announcement on how God thinks. And he saw that from the 11 disciples and their friends, the church grew. And there in the beginning chapters of Acts, we see that 3,000 were baptized. And then in a couple of chapters, 5,000 were baptized. Why? Because they bought into the idea, they bought into the thinking of God. God said, you're going to take this to the world. And once they receive that power, as it says in verse 8, but you shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit. They began to think like God and they began to work like God thinks. Thinking big. And the church was growing and growing. God is a big thinker. And he wants us to pick up on that same pattern of thinking, friends. When Israel left Egypt, you can see the difference between God's thinking and even man's thinking. When they came confronted against the Red Sea, man saw a barrier, but what did God see? 
He saw a highway right through the Red Sea. When man was thirsty in the desert, man just saw a rock. But God saw a water fountain coming out of that rock. When confronted with hunger, God rained a sufficient diet, which was known as manna. Do you actually know what the word manna means? What is it? What is that? You see, sometimes God sends us manna. Sometimes God sends us a blessing that we say, what is that? They were hungry and God rains the food for them and they're like, what is this? How, do you cook this? Do you bake this? Do you fry this? What do you do with it? And God sends us manna to see if we will take it as He gives it. So some of you may remember when our family first got to this church, uh, Salih was involved in an accident just right here, right on Henderson. And, uh, and we lost our only vehicle that we had. It got totaled. I don't know how it got totaled. It was just for me a little bump. But uh, so we're out looking for a vehicle. We find the, a vehicle. And, uh, but in our minds, we need another vehicle just to make it easier for me to do my driving and her, her to do her driving with the school and her errands and many other things. And we were looking for a vehicle, and, but at the same time thinking, well, you know, we can't afford that, but we were like this. And God gave us a vehicle. God gave us a second vehicle. Now, when somebody gives you a gift, do you pay for it? It's a gift. God gave us a vehicle. He gave. You're catching what I'm saying, right? We didn't have to make a, a down payment, anything. Somebody says, here, take it. And at first, at first we, we looked at it. I looked at it over 200,000 miles. <laughs> it leaks plenty of oil that we can... We can, we can have our own, our, own, our own oil shop. And at first I was like, what is this? But yet God gives us manna. He gives us blessings. Sometimes there are those, what is this gifts? To see how we will take it. And we say, Lord, thank you. And that vehicle, that I don't even know, it's a 1938 Plymouth van, or what, what year is it? 98? 99. But that, that vehicle, I can tell you right now, has been a blessing and taken us in many places. Amen. On the contrary, that vehicle's air condition is so cold, you'll need a sweater, even in summer, inside the van. And that is a blessing. That is a blessing, friends. You see, here God gave them the manna because God's thinking was much bigger than man's thinking. Man was looking for maybe plants, something to implant, maybe something else to eat, but God gave them something bigger. Joshua chapter 1, turn to the book of Joshua. We're, going to, we're, going to, we're looking at, the, at God's thinking and toward the end, is a punchline of this morning's message. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. Here Joshua is now in command, taking over Moses' position. And here in Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, the Lord tells Joshua, Every place that, your, that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, can you imagine that every place that your foot sets, it's yours. I will give it to you. All Joshua needed to do is have faith in putting one foot in front of the other. The thinking of God. Notice verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. This means that in order for Joshua to accomplish what God just said, his thinking must be the same as the thinking of God. 
In Joshua's mind, this is impossible, but he thinks, but he goes in his own, but if he were to go in his own thoughts, he would not have accomplished everything that we read in the book of Joshua. He must grab the thoughts of God. And when Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, you see, God's thoughts were like, all you got to do is just march around and that's it. Man's thoughts is what? We need to get an army, we need to get weapons, sufficient men, find a strategy where we can infiltrate, come in. And God says, my thoughts are different. I got bigger thoughts. All I got to do is just walk around and I'll take care of it. And Joshua bought into that. He says, we're going to do it. Even his commanders must have said, you know, there has to be something else. Do we take our sword? No, you don't take any weapons. All you take is the trumpet. And so Joshua's thoughts became God's thoughts, which are much more bigger thoughts. And that is what we need to do. Think big thoughts. Think big thoughts like God thinks. Christianity demands a new way of seeing things, friends. Christianity demands a new way of seeing things. Our eyes and the way of seeing things should be through the Holy Scriptures. Through the Holy Scriptures. It begins and ends with God. That's why Philippians 4.13 tells us, I can do all things, period, no, through Christ who gives me the strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and the thinking of God that He also wants the thinking of us to be. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Here this is what God wants us to think. He says, Therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God expects us to think that we are a new creation, a new creature. Old things are passed away. But notice how it begins. If anyone is in Christ. Just how Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. Christ has to be in the center of our thoughts. It is through Christ. It is the thinking of Christ. This is the thinking of God and God puts no limits on you in Him. On you in Him. Ephesians chapter 3, just a couple of books after. Go to the book of Ephesians. We're going to see here as well God's thinking. That should be our thinking. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 14. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 14. The Bible says, For this reason, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with a mighty thought, with mighty thought, with, with might through His Spirit, in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God God isn't just satisfied with a little bit, but with, with, but with all the fullness of God. The, thing we, the things we can accomplish through Him go far beyond what we can imagine, friends. The things that we can accomplish through Jesus Christ go far beyond what we can imagine and what even the world can imagine. God is such a big thinker that he believes that Harley Charles can even be saved. That's how much of a big thinker he is. That he 
actually believes that I can be saved. God is such a big thinker that he believes that you can be saved. He is such a big thinker that he even believes your neighbors can be saved. The person we, we write off as, oh, forget it. That's, there's no hope for that person. God thinks much bigger than that and believes that even that person can be saved. He has faith in me and that is why. That is why in Revelation 2, 7, 2, 11, 2, 17, 2, 26, 3, 5, 3, 12, 3, 21, and many other places in the book of Revelation, you will keep finding the word that says, He that overcomes shall be saved. Amen. He that overcomes shall be saved. Church, no matter what you and I are confronted with, no matter what inclinations we are born with, no matter what deficiencies we may have, God sees you and me as overcomers. As overcomers. Because his thoughts are much bigger than our thoughts. Doesn't he say that? My thoughts are not your thoughts. But he wants us to think like him. From Desire of Ages, Page 671. It is the spirit that makes if effective what has been wrought out by the world's redeemer. It is by the spirit that the heart is made pure. Through the spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Amen. It is by the Holy Spirit that we become partakers of what kind of nature? divine nature Christ has given his spirit as a, as a divine power to overcome and here it is all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his character upon his church why because God is a big thinker God will not fall for well my mother used to drink so I, I, she passed it on to me. God sees you as an overcomer. Well, I grew up in a home that was, there was a lot of beating in him. You may have. But God sees you as an overcomer. God sees you as a doer. As a doer. As an overcomer. And that's why there in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. I can get over all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Just going back to Joshua chapter 1. Why was it that God told Joshua everywhere you go, everywhere you step, I will give you that? Well, there's, there's a reason. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. This is a part that sometimes we don't like this part of the sermon. Chapter 1 verse 7. After he tells them, I will give you all the land that you step on. Be strong and good courage. For to this, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance to the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. That you may prosper wherever you go. You see humans want success but without commitment. We want salvation without responsibility. We want to receive but we don't want to sacrifice. And if you are a person who sees yourself in heaven, if, your thought, if, you thought, if your thoughts have reached that point, do you also see yourself as obedient? As obedient. It's nice to see ourselves walking in the streets of gold. How many of you have thought about that? 
about heaven and what glory will be like. I know I have. Walking through the streets of gold, flying to different places, having a crown of gold, wearing a white robe that will never wrinkle or get dirty, talking to Jesus, talking to the patriarchs. It's nice to see ourselves in heaven. It sounds nice and it's easy to picture yourself there. But do you picture yourself keeping your mouth shut when it should be shut? Do you picture yourself putting down that cigarette or that liquor or that drug? Do you picture yourself saying no to your passions? Do you picture yourself doing what God says? You see, we picture ourselves in heaven and God pictures us in heaven as well. But God also pictures us here on earth being obedient. Amen. God pictures here on earth being faithful. It is one thing to see yourself in glory. It is another thing to see yourself obedient from day to day to day. And this is why God told Joshua, every place that your soul, your foot will tread upon, I will give it to you. Because Joshua obeyed, fulfilled, was filled with Christ. Seek the Lord every day. God is a big thinker. God not only pictures us in heaven with Him, but He pictures us here living the Christian life, friends. He pictures us here living the Christian life. He pictures us controlling our temper. He pictures us Staying pure away from drugs, sex, and alcohol. He pictures us being faithful. Do you picture yourself in that same way? Or do you only picture yourself walking in the streets of gold? And it doesn't matter what we do here on earth. In Acts chapter 1, just there where we were, verse 8. Our scripture reading. God is a big thinker. And he's told the disciple to go win the world. And this is the theme in the book of Acts. And the early church picked it up. And they began to win the world. If you take a look at your bulletin. At the meditation. As Christ sent forth His church, so today He sent forth the members of His church. That's you and I. The same power that the apostle had is for them. If they will make God their strength, He will work with them and they shall not labor in vain. Christ has given to the church a sacred charge. Every member should be a channel through which God can communicate to the world the treasures of His grace, the unsearchable riches of Christ. There is nothing that the Savior desires so much as agents, to, as agents who will represent to the world His spirit and His character. All of heaven is waiting for men and women through whom God can reveal the power of Christianity. The church is God's agency for the proclamation of truth, empowered by Him to do a special work. And if she is loyal to Him, obedient to all His commandments, there is a commitment. There will dwell within her the excellence of divine grace. If she will be true to her allegiance, if she will honor the Lord God of Israel, there is no power that can stand against her. God is such a big finger, friends. So I'll just end as I started. Are you a small thinker, a midget thinker, or a big thinker? Because God is a big thinker. A much bigger thinker. God is such a big thinker that He believes that I can be saved. That He believes that I can walk the Christian walk. 
That he believes that I can be a pure Christian. That he believes I can be a nice person. That I can control my temper. That I can watch my tongue. That I can guard my thoughts. That God believes, friends, this is going to hit everyone. God is such a big thinker that God believes that all of us can control our appetites. Amen. Don't tell me you're not in, in that boat. God is such a big thinker, friends. Those that are in Christ are always thinking bigger than the situation that they are in. Those that are in Christ are always thinking bigger than the situation that they are in. Because when we are in Christ and we think big like thoughts, we think my marriage can be better. I can be a better husband. I can be a better spouse. I can be a better son or a better daughter. God has great victories in mind for you and for me. And as we prepare for evangelism, we must think as God thinks. We must think as God thinks. See, God believes that each family here can bring one soul. Absolutely. He wouldn't have asked his disciples to win the world if, they couldn't, if he didn't believe they could do it. And we just read earlier right here in the meditation that that same power that he gave them, if we are faithful and loyal to Christ, he will give it to us. He will give it to us, and not just that. If she will honor the Lord God of Israel, there is no power that can stand against her. Amen and amen. So a real simple question as I, as I appeal this morning. How many of you are guilty of small thinking. How many of you and me are guilty of small thinking? Every hand should have gone up. All of us are guilty of small thinking. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Do you want to stop sinning? Well, there's power in the blood. Would you over evil a victory win? Well, there's power in the blood. Would you be free from your passion and pride? From your passion and pride. Well, there is power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary? Well, there's power in the blood. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? Would you? Would you, do, would you do service for Jesus, your king? There is power in the blood. There is no power in me or in you. We got squat. Nothing. But there is power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder, Working power. Somebody said it. Notice. Working power. A power that involves working. Doing. God. That's why God. That's why God says. Blessed are they that do. Do. Friends. We got to get off that wagon of. Of having in. Too much sympathy on ourselves. And just do what God tells us to do. But the only way to do it is through the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. In the power of God. So all of us raise our hands that we are guilty of small thinking. And with that confession, I do want to. I'm going to ask the lady if she can come to the piano. I do want to have a minute or two where we ask God for forgiveness for being small thinkers and thinking that we can't overcome sin, that we can't be nice, that we can't overcome 
our, our appetites, that we can't overcome our pride, that we can't overcome being nice, our temper, our habits, our internet searches, our hidden sins, Friends, we can overcome because God believes we can overcome when we put our faith in Him. I can do all things, Jesus says. I can do all things, but through Jesus, because He gives me the strength. So, we're going to spend, just as we are sitting down, a minute in prayer. And I'm going to invite you to talk with your Maker and ask forgiveness for being small thinkers as myself I will as well and asking him to be big thinkers like him Father in heaven, Lord God, Lord, your thoughts you have said are not our thoughts. But we want our thoughts to be your thoughts. We want to think like you and you think and believe that we can overcome. We need to think in the same way. I ask that you Grant us your Holy Spirit who has the power for us to be overcomers. Help us to think big, not just overcoming, but even in the plans of this church. Lord, there are several projects going on and different ideas. Lord, but we know that you have much even bigger plans than what we can imagine. I ask that you bless every single person here who has confessed to you for being a small thinker and that you fill them with your Holy Ghost that we may be big thinkers and accomplish and be doers not just because you expect that from us, but because we can do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving our sins. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving our small thinking. But help us to be like Abraham, where it says that he believed in the Lord and it was counted to him for righteousness. We want to believe in your thinking for our lives. And if you tell us to go win Cleburne and Keene and Joshua and Burleson, Lord, then help us to believe and to do it. Oh, Father in heaven, I thank you very much for hearing our prayers. Bless every single soul here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.